Why is it dark? Why? Oi, give it back! Here we go again. Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. We're in the car again. Uh, you may remember the Parsec video that we did a little while ago. We're going to be hiring a part-time video editor to edit the videos for Mainbyte and Gear Seekers Shorts. However, they're not going to have to be in our house to edit. So it actually works! Yes! Not only is it working flawlessly, it's connected to network storage with Blackmagic RAW with 8 to 1 compression and it's still playing back perfectly. I'm so happy that we got this oh, to yeah, work. I said that I was gonna do a follow-up. Well, there's kind of two follow-ups to that. So over the last uh, few weeks, or whenever since we did the video, I've been looking for a rack-mounted case solution for our Parsec system, because we've actually got an editor who's been doing all the shorts. So the story goes, I've been searching for a three or four U half-depth case for weeks and just there's absolutely nothing and then yesterday I had this idea I was like why don't I look for HTPC cases because most of them can be rack mounted and they're about three and a half to four U in size and they're all half depth I was searching high and low all over Sydney to try and buy one of these GD09 cases we checked all the specs it seems that everything's gonna work with the GD09 so I was looking at every store no one had stock except there was one in stock at Scorp Tech over in Macquarie Park so the second I saw it I was like I mean, this was after hours yesterday too, so I was like, I need to buy this straight away so I can go and get it because I want to move this system off the floor of my office to the space in my cupboard where I've got all the rest of our servers. And when we eventually move house, I'll be able to rack mount it in a rack. So yeah, that's why we're, we're heading on over to Scorp Tech right now. That was a really like rough gear change. <laughs> oh, red light, but yeah. All right, I'll give you guys a bit of an update on the hardware that we went with. Well, actually, it's the same hardware, using the same CPU, using the 3900 XT still. Uh, we're changing the motherboard to an X570 board. We're using the X570 Aorus Master. Now, the reason why we're going with the Master now is because uh, the X570S Master we have, so I can pull that X570 board out of rotation. I don't need to use it for that anymore and the way we've actually been using this setup is it does actually get used we've got an editor he lives in Townsville so I'll show you on a map right now the distance between Sydney and Townsville and you'll see how far away it is and the experience on his end well let, let's let's tell you who it is it's Cokes is one of our discord admins Cokes <laughs> So yeah, he's been editing, and yeah, Townsville's very far away, as you've probably seen by the map that I probably put in the video. Yeah, he's been doing all that. Oh. Rolling up to Scorp Tech. Where are we going to park? Oh, we just park over here, eh? Right? Yep. Right here next to that beautiful B, B7 RS4. Ooh, look at that. That is a very nice RS4. Time to mask up, party people. I'm going that way. See ya. Well, that was fun. Guess who was working? Panda. Panda from our Discord. He works at the Scorp Tech. He's like, hey, Nick. I'm like, whoa, that's so crazy. Wild, right? Thanks, Panda, for the hookup. Well, he didn't actually hook it up. You I, paid for I, it. I paid for it, but he was, he was there to serve me, which was really cool. That's nice. Oop. It's not heavy at all. There's a shirt on the back seat. Hello, baby, look at that. Look at that. Look. It's a baby. It's a baby. Hello, baby. Oh, skill. Turn on the studio. Let there be light. I love that when I plan stuff right, it, it all fits in my head. And then when I go to test fit things, it's a different story. And that's kind of what happened with this. I didn't film any of this. I was just test fitting to make sure we had things right. And I had a bit of a contingency plan in the back of my mind, just in case this didn't go exactly the way I wanted. Turns out 
that's exactly what happened. Well, I, I planned for this anyway. One of our other servers that we've decommissioned at the moment is using this, it's the NHD9DX i4 3U. It's a 3U server cooler, 2011 sockets with the ILM or with the regular square mounting or some older stuff like 1356 socket. The knock to an AM4 adapter kit actually works for this cooler. So I went and ordered one from another computer store, Umart and West Ride, which is really close to us. So I'm just waiting for them to confirm that order so they can go out again and pick up some more hardware. So that's the story. I, I had a feeling that my original plan wasn't going to work. And like, like I mentioned yesterday when I was doing all the setup and research for this video, this was plan B and I saw that this was quite easy to get from a local computer store. So now we're just, yeah, we're just waiting to confirm. We'll go out, run out, pick up another thing from another store and then we'll finally build. Before uh, we can actually use this cooler, I've got to go and harvest it out of a server in my office that's sitting on a shelf that is underneath another server. So I'm gonna have to shut down one of our storage servers, remove that storage server from the shelf. Then I need to get into the other server and while I'm standing on a step ladder, I need to remove the CPU coolers and two of the 80 mil fans that I've got in that other server. It's decommissioned, so it hasn't been switched on in a while. There's nothing important on that second server. This is an ordeal. I did not think it would turn out like this, but that's part of the journey when you're doing like weird computer projects, especially with stuff that I kind of planned to do this video today, but yeah, I didn't think it was quite gonna go this way. All right, we better shut down this server then. And guys, like I actually do daily drive Linux, as you can see here. This is actually my machine that I do everything on. All right, Spira. Hopefully nothing sensitive is on the screen. Oh no, it's just a home assistant instance. Let's make that a bit wider so you can see. I actually upgraded the hardware in this last week. I just didn't make a video about it. If you guys are interested, I'll just quickly show you. It's got an i5 10400 in it and a couple 10 gig ethernet inf interfaces, 64 gigs of RAM. Well, this is just about the least flattering angle ever. I'm standing on top here to get this server down. I have to get this server off the top of the other one. You can see them both here old storage server, much smaller, more dense storage server that does a bunch of other stuff on the network. And I need to take this down. It's quite heavy. Um, this one's got 64 terabytes of really fast storage, but I this one's super ghetto actually. Um, yeah, you can see that I put a full size ATX board in this MATX case with the SFX power supply. It's got dual 10 gig ethernet. I won't be able to show the next process because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the lid off this server and then I'm gonna pull everything out while I'm up there. So yeah, least flattering angle, but I'll leave it recording and then I'll show you what we're actually fishing out. Look at that, stack of DVDs, flying DVDs out. You got these two fans that need cleaning. This, this system hasn't been powered up in a long time. It's very dusty. And that's the cooler right there. It's a very small, very dense server air cooler. It should be able to handle the TDP of the CPU that we're using. Uh, and if it does get too hot, I'll just underclock it a little bit. So it should be fine. Press it clear. Ooh. Nicholas Cole, king of repeating himself in videos. <laughs> yes, we are on our way to the local Umart, which is very, very close to our house. And I need to get this AM4 adapter bracket for this cooler. Now on Noctua's website, it says that it's compatible with uh, the version of the cooler that is the 4U version, not the 3U version, but the mounting system is the same. I've been skateboarding a lot lately, but we haven't been filming any of it. Wow, that's a nice colored car. Ooh, purple. That's like Lamborghini purple. That was real nice. Um, because you guys know what's going on with YouTube at the moment and tech. It's kind of gone to poopies. It's gone to shit because the silicon shortage is just, it's making all of us pretty stressed about tech at the moment, but there's still stuff that we've got to do. It's, it's our job 
there's still stuff we need to cover and I still need things edited, which is the whole point of this Parsec machine. Now, Coax doesn't edit everything on the channel, just Gear Seeker shorts for now. And we've got how many, we've got shorts scheduled all the way through till middle of July or something. Like, he's been smashing it. Good job, And Coke. it's his birthday soon, so. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the worst parking spot ever. That's why I like the cameras in cars. People are like, oh, you don't need that to park. Oh, I do. <laughs> Give me all of them. That's it. That's all I needed. Adapter bracket. Nine dollars. Pretty good. Actually, a couple dollars cheaper than most other places that I saw. After all of our fart assing around today trying to get to this point, it's the moment of truth. I'm hoping this fits. It looks it looks as though it will. Oh no! <laughs> no, it'll work. I just all I need to do is move the fan up. So yeah, we, we should be okay. We'll just remove this fan. I, I thought that that might be the case because the fan on this was quite low down as it was. It should be in the middle somewhere. Okay, that to me is a huge relief because I didn't want to waste this whole day and then not have a cooler to fit in here. I'm glad that this fits actually, very, very glad. Otherwise I would have been quite upset. And this thing that didn't ship being compatible with AM4, this was a server cooler. It is now compatible. Let's do it. It's finally time to assemble this thing. All right, here we go. CPU in the socket. Let's get this RAM sorted out now. This is what I actually swapped out into the machine after we did the video. I'm not sure if, it, actually, I'm not sure if I had this in the original Parsec system build video. I can't, I honestly cannot remember. Let's do it up here in the top slot because there's a screw already there and I don't need to go hunting for a screw. So you can go up there. Bingo bango. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is remove the stock AM4 brackets up here. Pop these on the holes like this. We'll give it a quick look. We'll just give it a quick test fit and see what happens. That's the way they're going. And we'll just do another test fit in a second. We'll just get the screws in. It's easier for me to, you know, test fit, do it a couple times than, you know, tell you guys the wrong thing that it's these both go inwards yep that's right I always tell you guys to do this so you should listen to me opposite corners all the time get the perfect even distribution of science I may or may not add another fan to this cooler at a later stage but I don't have one of these 92 mil fans right now to add. Oh, it's not enough thermal paste. It is the perfect amount of thermal paste. There we go. And now the cooler can go on. A little bit there, a little bit there, and we'll go all the way on this one. Only till it stops, don't over tighten them. Give this one a little bit more juice up there. Let's uh, drop that fan in. Oh, that's quite nice. It, the mounting gear sits in the fan now. The good thing about a cooler like this as well is a lot of big air coolers, they interfere with the top PCIe slot. It makes it a, a nightmare to get your hand in there and push that down if you need to. And this one doesn't have such problems, but I suspect that I'll probably add another fan on this side of the cooler at a later state, but probably not. We'll just leave it like this. Let's take a quick whip around and take a look at this GD09 from Silverstone. So it's like a classic HTPC style case. It's kind of old at this point. It has been revised with USB type C on the front. It's got an optical drive bay if you want to have it there or whatnot. We're going to be removing all the supports for that anyway, because it will interfere with our cooler. But yeah, it's got built in dust filters. You traditionally set this up in a positive pressure situation. You've got all of your front IO and stuff, as I already mentioned, nothing special. This case is, you know, for sticking into a rack as an HTPC, basically, in like a home, like a proper home theater setup, if that's what you wanted to do. The back, full ATX, regular power supplies can fit in here, two 80 mil fans on the back, and the motherboard is justified towards the left if you're looking at it from the back. Yeah, nothing 
Too special actually, so we'll open this up. This is like the old P like desktop PC cases, like, yeah, like old PCs back in the day and stuff, like the Amiga 4000 and stuff was like this too. But it's just two screws to pop off the lid. It's got a vent as well to help with GPU intake, so that's a thing. I hope you guys enjoyed this bit of a journey of me kind of downsizing the Parsec machine that we had before. Most of the configuration is exactly the same. I had to redo the fan curves and all that stuff. I actually had some problems with the RAM. I swapped it over to an LPX kit that I had. It's a 32 gig two stick kit. And I mean, these things happen. The RAM was just being really weird and I updated the BIOS. It did all the things I needed to do. System runs fine. Thermals are okay. Idles around 43 degrees, gets up to around 70 degrees, which is more than fine for a system like this. I did stress test it, so yeah, it is running quite well. This is many, many hours after we started this video. It's already dark outside and everything, so yeah. <laughs> it was a whole day's thing, and usually uh, with these videos, I would do this stuff and not film it, but I thought I'd take you guys along for the ride. Considering last time I did something like this, you guys said you like this vloggy kind of stuff where you see kind of behind the scenes of what we're working on and just random projects that we've got. I'll walk you guys through a couple more of the parts that we went with. So the GPU is the same as the last one, 2070 Super. The Noctua, I can't remember the exact model name, it's kind of long, like all Noctua coolers with that kit that we got to convert it to AM4. I'm using two 80 mil Noctua Redux fans at the back. The fans are deep, cool fans are 120s all the way around. It's positive pressure, so it intakes from both the top and the bottom and exhausts out the back. This is the best way to do it for a rack mount solution because there's no front intake, so you have to intake from the sides. Power supply is the same one that we used last time as well. Now there's one little tip that I wanted to share with you guys. Well, two tips that I want to share with you guys since we've been using this Parsec system for, I don't know, six or seven weeks or maybe two months or something, whenever it was that we started doing this. If you're doing a headless Parsec solution like this one, so this doesn't have a monitor, a keyboard or anything hooked up to it. It's just a box sitting in a cupboard with an ethernet cable in. You'll need two things. The first thing you'll need is a dummy HDMI adapter. This is a 4K one. So this tricks the GPU into thinking it's got a 4K monitor plugged into it. The reason for this is when you log into Parsec and there's no physical display output, Parsec won't display anything, which kind of leads into the next thing that you need. You need to have a pointing device plugged in. What does that mean? You need to have a mouse plugged in. So the way you can do this, you can buy like a cheap mouse and keyboard combo off Amazon for like 10 bucks and just leave the dongle plugged in. Or if you've got an old mouse laying around, like an old USB mouse, plug that in and away you go. And that's what I've done. I've got another solution that I'm working on at the moment that I'll follow up with in part three, but I'm currently working on an internal USB 2.0 header with the PCB of an old mouse and the PCB for the mouse plugs directly into the motherboard 
to trick it into that as well. And that, like, I mean, I could just spend 10 bucks and get a wireless mouse or Amazon or something and just leave the dongle plugged in, but this way is more fun. So yeah, that's basically it. I'll put a PC part picker list down below in the description for everything that is in this system. Yeah, and of course it wasn't meant to be too serious. I didn't get too technical. It was just you guys hanging out with me as I went and got this up and running. Now, the only thing I need to do is provision power and ethernet in that cupboard to get it all to work and we should be good to go. But bench testing it, everything is good. Anyways guys, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available over on Patreon. If you wanna get early access to videos like this one, head on over to Floatplane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers, you peak. We seek, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along for this little ride with me today. It was fun, what do you reckon, Claire? I was there too. Yeah, Claire filmed everything in the car on the GoPro. That's why it's bad. Nah, it's fine, I've already looked at some of the footage. It's okay, you did good. Now I've got to edit the whole thing. <laughs> like, there's a lot of footage to go through. And the funny thing is, you guys aren't gonna see a lot of the stuff that we filmed today. Does that make sense? Also, where's the cat? Sleeping. Okay, fair enough. Thanks for watching.